Russia continues fierce drone and missile campaign overnight on key Ukrainian cities. Countries and international agencies condemn Israeli attack on a UN-run training center housing thousands of displaced people and communists in Gaza. The European Commission President von der Leyen will chair a dialogue surrounding agriculture as farmers' protests increase across Europe. The Olympic torch will arrive in Paris in exactly six months with the help of 11,000 torchbearers. Russia's night campaign of drone and missile attacks on key Ukrainian cities and infrastructure goes on. Russian drone attacks on Wednesday night injured six people in Odessa and several residential buildings and a warehouse were damaged. Kyiv announced that air defense systems in the Odessa and Mykolaiv region shot down 11 of 14 drones launched by Moscow. In a statement, the Ukrainian Air Force said that the Russian forces had used Iranian-designed shade drones. Kyiv continues to call on its Western allies to reinforce its air defense systems. On the Russian side, the operational headquarters of Krasnodar region confirmed that there had been a fire at an oil refinery in the Black Sea port of Tuapse in southern Russia. The circumstances of the incident were being investigated. Some Russian media claimed that it was sparked by a Ukrainian drone attack. At least five people were killed when a strike hit a mosque in the southern Gaza city of Rafah on Wednesday. The dead and the injured were taken to the nearby Abu Yusef al-Najjar hospital. Israeli fire has killed over 25,700 Palestinians in Gaza, according to the Hamas-run health ministry. Countries and international agencies denounce an attack by Israeli tanks that killed at least nine people at a UN-run training center, housing thousands of displaced people in Kanyunis on Wednesday. There was a, 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 an attack on a, an UNRWA training center in Kanyunis. It's been sheltering 10,000 displaced people, and they've just been hit recently in the afternoon just now, and we're see, mass casualties have taken place. Some buildings are ablaze, and um, there's reported of deaths. Many people are trying to flee the scene, but unable to do so. The United States condemned the attack. We deplore today's attack on uh, the UN's Khan Yunus training center. Um, you've heard me say it before, you've heard the secretary say it before, but uh, civilians must be protected and the protected nature of UN facilities must be respected. Protesters demonstrating for the release of the hostages from Gaza have blocked traffic on a central highway in Tel Aviv on Wednesday. According to Israeli media, the protest came as Qatar has communicated to Israel that Hamas is temporarily delaying all further talks for a hostage deal. French farmers demonstrated Wednesday across the country and in Brussels against low wages and what they see as excessive bureaucracy, part of a rising tide of anger among agriculture producers across the EU. On Thursday, the European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen will chair a dialogue surrounding agriculture and the green transition. The Polish government wants to sign an agreement with Ukraine on the transit of agriculture products, which would secure the interests of Polish farmers against an uncontrolled influx of goods from Ukraine. Farmers have been protesting in Poland against the unregulated import of Ukrainian goods and the introduction of the European Green Deal. Farmers and transporters in Romania have been protesting in the streets for almost 15 days. They are demanding lower taxes and fairer subsidies. Farmers in central Greece escalated their protests on Wednesday by blocking traffic on national roads. They are demanding better compensation for crop losses due to natural disasters and disease, as well as building infrastructure to protect agriculture from extreme weather. A six-day strike called by the train drivers' union is jeopardizing much of Germany's rail traffic starting on Wednesday. Most cross-border services have been cancelled, but as far as the Swiss section is concerned, alternatives have been provided. Es wird wahrscheinlich der der Gewerkschaft jetzt nicht so passen, ne, dass es jetzt hier eine Alternative gibt. Aber für mich ist es natürlich sehr gut und er fährt auch sehr zuverlässig, muss man sagen, immer pünktlich. According to the state-owned railway operator Deutsche Bahn, around 80% of long-distance trains have been cancelled. Among other things, union demands a reduction from 38 to 35 hours a week, with no reduction in salary.
An Austrian court has ruled that Joseph Fritzl, who raped his captive daughter over a period of 24 years, can be moved from psychiatric detention to a regular prison. The 88-year-old will have to attend regular psychotherapy over a 10-year probation period. A request to release him from detention was rejected, but it's still a win for Fritzl's legal team, as conditions in a regular prison are considered an improvement. Yeah, he was a bit the brain nahe, noch einmal geschildert. Uh, dass das ganz etwas Furchtbares ist, das er gemacht hat ja? und dass ihm diese Menschen irrsinnig leid tun und dass er das am liebsten ungeschehen machen würde. Ja, er hat auch vorher schon mehrfach gesagt, er würde am liebsten sein Leben dafür geben, dass er das ungeschehen machen kann, aber er kann es halt leider nicht ungeschehen machen. Aber er befasst sich wirklich Tag und Nacht mit dieser Thematik, er hat wirklich die Akten vor sich. Fritzl became known as the Monster of Amsterdam after the North Austrian town where he, in 1984, locked up his then 18-year-old daughter Elizabeth. His crimes were revealed in 2008 and a year later he was sentenced to life imprisonment for committing incest, rape, coercion, false imprisonment, enslavement and negligent homicide of one of his seven infant sons. Thousands of people have been queuing across Russia for days now to give their support to Boris Nadezhdin in his bid to become Russian president in the election on March the 17th. Nadezhdin is the only candidate who openly speaks out against Russia's actions in Ukraine. Так сообщают, что собрали уже 100 тысяч, и сбор активно продолжается. Первый вопрос есть с этим, насколько Кремль рассматривает надежду на как серьезного соперника Путина на предстоящих президентских выборах, будет ли угрозу? Нисколько, мы не рассматриваем его как соперника. The Destin recently met with soldiers' wives who were demanding that their reservist husbands, who went into service in autumn 2022, are replaced with contract soldiers. Another presidential hopeful, Ekaterina Dentsova, has lost her appeal against authorities' refusal to register her for the race. She campaigned on a vision of a humane, cooperative Russia. Behind bars in penal colonies or in self-exile abroad, Russian opposition figures vow they will still put up a fight against President Putin as he seeks yet another term in office, although they believe he will be declared the winner no matter how the votes are cast. German authorities are closely examining the possibility of an entry ban for the far-right Austrian with a master plan for the deportation of immigrants. Martin Schneller could be banned from entering Germany if he is deemed to pose a threat to German democratic stability. He founded the so-called Identarian movement, which preaches the superiority of European ethnic groups and is a frequent visitor to Germany. The talks come after days of protests against Germany's far-right AFD party. A fast train has collided with a truck in eastern Czech Republic, killing one person and injuring at least 10 people, officials said. Czech Railway said the driver of the train was killed. Rescuers treated 20 individuals, 18 of whom were transported to hospitals. The accident occurred early in the morning when a fast train heading for Prague hit a truck crossing the tracks. The police are investigating the case as endangerment due to negligence and are examining whether the truck had permission to cross. A Japanese court has sentenced to death a man found guilty of murder and other crimes for the arson attack on an anime studio in Kyoto, Japan in July 2019, which killed 36 people and left 30 injured. Kyoto District Court found the defendant mentally fit. According to state television NHK, the judge explained the defendant wanted to be a novelist but had been unsuccessful. The defendant believed Kyoto Animation had stolen novels that he submitted to a company competition, so he decided to take revenge. In exactly six months' time, on July 26, the Olympic flame will arrive on the Seine Banks for the opening ceremony of the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. Lit in Greece, the torch will travel by boat to Marseille and begin a long tour of France.
Mathieu Travers has been selected to be one of the 11,000 torchbearers. Pour ne rien vous cacher, j'ai eu les larmes aux yeux parce que pour moi, c'est vraiment l'histoire du sport, les Jeux Olympiques, et de me dire qu'à mon échelle, pendant 200 mètres, pendant 4 minutes, je vais appartenir à cette histoire. J'apprends ça. J'ai eu beaucoup d'émotions. 32-year-old Mathieu has suffered from a genetic neuromuscular disease since birth. Que j'utilise, c'est une commande buccale, en fait. But that hasn't stopped him from being active online. Donc à chaque fois, j'essaye d'immortaliser les souvenirs en faisant des petites photos. On a notamment Raphaël Nadal, Carlos Moya, Benoît Père et mon idole à moi, Paul-Henri Mathieu, qui est un joueur de tennis français. His passion for sport has helped him beat the doctor's prognosis. On avait dit à mes parents, ne vous attachez pas à cet enfant, il sera mort avant d'avoir deux ans. Et bon, les médecins se sont un peu trompés, puisque je suis toujours là. Quand j'étais jeune, forcément, quand on est une personne handicapée, on ne peut pas faire beaucoup d'activités. Et le fait de regarder du sport à la télé, très vite, ça m'a occupé et ça m'a passionné. J'ai toujours dit à mes proches, de toute façon, je ne peux pas mourir. Je n'ai pas encore vécu des Jeux Olympiques. Mathieu will follow the Paralympic Games, which he hopes will further help improve the conditions of those with disabilities. Ça beaucoup aidé, notamment dans le domaine du handicap. Ça nous a permis notamment de voir que nos transports en commun étaient mal ou pas du tout accessibles. Et ça va nous permettre, comme les autres l'ont fait avant nous, comme Londres l'a fait avant nous, comme Pékin l'a fait avant nous avant, d'évoluer de, de, et de nous rendre plus accessibles pour les personnes handicapées. While he waits for the flame and the athletes to arrive, Matthew continues to feed his YouTube channel. He talks about disability, home automation and of course sport.